Hi, Marissa. Lance Beezer from 27 News here in Madison. You mentioned some of the positive aspects that UW has as building blocks for you to build upon. But in order to kind of fix this thing, what are the rooms, areas with room for growth that you really saw that you feel like you need to attack right away? Yeah, I mean, I think like anything else, um, you can't have success without trust. And so for me coming in new, we've got to establish trust. The, the players have to trust me. Um, they have to trust my staff. Um, they have to trust the vision that we have for the program. Um, just like the administration had to trust me when I came in and interviewed. So I think that it, first and foremost, it's got to be built on that trust. Um, and then I think it's also about kind of doing things, um, you know, the Wisconsin way, right? So for, for me, that's making sure that we work harder than everybody else, that we work smarter than everyone else, you know, but that at the same time that we have a, a great time while we're doing it, because ultimately we are playing a game. So this should be enjoyable, um, but we're going to learn life lessons along the way. And I want to make sure that, you know, when they leave here, they're not just better basketball players, but they're better people. Let's go, Charles. Welcome back to, to, to the Big Ten, Melissa. How are you? Charles, what's going on? Good. We haven't seen each other since Indianapolis when you was there. No, it's been a while. I have a, just a non-basketball question, so to speak. Um, you are the seventh black female head coach in the Power Five conferences, and the second, and the second one in the Big Ten. How important to you as black women in the profession that coaching is, should be the first? How, 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 say that last part again? How, how important you see coaching diversity, especially for black oh. women? In the yes, no. Gotcha. Um, no, I, you know, I, I um, am a proud black woman um, and really um, appreciative to be able to kind of be um, a role model for other young black female coaches and um, players. Um, and at the same time, I, I, I want to, you know, I've always been really cognizant of the fact that I, I have earned the jobs that I have because of my competency and because of my capabilities. And then also I happen to be a black female. Um, I think that, you know, in a, in a role like this, um, I have an opportunity to show that, you know, we are capable of leading a, a Power Five program and that um, it can be successful and, and that other black women should get the opportunity to do that as well. Um, that it shouldn't be a one-off, but def definitely something that, um, you know, that, that we're afforded that opportunity more oftentimes than not. And we talk a lot about, you know, being in the room um, when it happens. That's a little Hamilton uh, reference for you all. Um, but, um, but, you know, but also having a seat at the table and, 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 you know, and if you don't, bring your own chair. And so I'm really, um, you know, I feel really fortunate for this opportunity to kind of have this platform to not only, you know, try to win games, but also um, more, more than that, um, show that there's, you know, there's diversity of thought, there's diversity of, of, of you know, opportunity and, and that we can do so much more than just, you know, teach kids this, this you know, game with a round ball. You was asked uh, what you learned at UConn. Some of the things that you learned from your days in Minnesota that helped you become a good coach. Um, one, I learned that um, I don't like having the bench below the court uh, because I can't wear a skirt. Uh, no, but I, um, no, I, I learned um, so much from Pam and just, you know, that was my first kind of soiree into Power Five um, basketball. Um, and it really, you know, the player development component was, was huge. I had a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the, the post players down there. Um, and also just kind of, to see the the level of um, investment from the fans, I think that that was so cool. I mean, on a, any given night, you had eight or nine thousand fans, and the barn was rocking. And so, um, I know it's possible to have that type of environment, and, and even more um, if you do if you do it right. Congratulations! Look forward to seeing you this fall. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Same. Brian Posick. Hi, Marissa. Brian Posick at WIBA Radio here in town. Um, you were talking about uh, Williams Arena rocking with eight or 9,000, and uh, you had done your uh, looked into the history of this program. There was a point in time where there were 
nine, 10, 11,000 rock in the old field house and the Kohl Center too for Wisconsin women's basketball. Do you think that's a possibility again? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, anything's possible, right? I mean, you cut your hair. So like, what are we talking about? No, but um, <laughs> Zinga, Zinga, we're all friends. Come on. Um, I'll be here all year. Um, but um, no, I, um, I definitely think it's a possibility. I think that's one of the things I really um, am most excited about. And, you know, being in a, in a market like Boston, you know, there's 250,000 college students in Boston. There's several different, you know, universities and a lot of affinity for, you know, different pockets, depending on where you went to school. And so I think when you come to a place like Wisconsin, I'm really excited about like just being able to immerse myself in the community and get people excited. And I know that they support, you know, and I know that they want to support and people like winners, but people also like people, right? And so I think that that's gotta be the combination then and we kind of strike that balance of, hey, we have to get you invested in us first and the wins are gonna come. I ask a follow-up to that too? Hey, I guess, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead, Is Brian. That you, there's a there's a fantastic young woman that uh, played the last three years at the University of Wisconsin and entered the transfer portal, Imani Lewis. Have you reached out to her by chance? I have reached out to her. Can you tell us anything? <laughs> any chance, another follow up. Any any chance she'll remain a Badger, Marissa? Um, you know, I think that, you know, I want to respect um, Amani and the conversation that we had. And, um, you know, I, I think she's ultimately going to have to make, you know, her decision. So I would definitely tell you to hit up Amani and talk to her <laughs> about that. Um, CBS 58. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, CBS 58. Yep. Yeah, video and audio, right? <laughs> you think after a year we get this thing down. Okay. Uh, Kevin Holden, CBS 58 in Milwaukee. Uh, just a little follow-up to, to the question from, from Charles. Uh, you One of the things that you've done during your coaching career uh, is to, to help with some, of, some committees like uh, the Patriot League's Anti-Racism Commission, University of Connecticut's uh, Diversity Council. How important has that role been in your development as a person and a coach and how excited are you to continue that in this chapter? Yeah, no, um, it's been huge. I mean, I think, um, you know, my parents are, uh, my mom is white, my dad's black. I've always had um, kind of a, a mixed perspective coming um, coming up in this world and been really, um, really invested in, in fairness and equality and social justice. And so it, it's not kind of that un, uncharacteristic for me to have gotten involved in those um, those avenues. And especially in light of the events of this past summer, um, you know, and I think it's kind of ironic that you know, today is the, the start of the trial for um, the murder of George Floyd. And so um, I'm just really, um, I feel really fortunate that I've been able to use this platform in addition to coaching, you know, basketball and doing something that I love to also be able to bring light to um, some really important issues and to really affect, um, you know, tangible change. That's kind of been the whole, the whole, you know, cornerstone of what I wanted to do. It, it wasn't just about, you know, having conversations, but how can we kind of turn those conversations into action? And I'm really fired up about um, the Big Ten Anti-Racism um, Commission and hoping to be able to become a member of that. Um, I actually had gotten a call today from Kevin Warren, the commissioner and so introducing himself that was really cool and um he was really supportive and said you know here to to help and love to have you be a part of it um and so yeah i think that those things are inspiring i also think that you know the strategic plan that wisconsin has laid out that was something that also attracted me to the job um that you know it wasn't just something that was kind of in talk but that they had actually put it out on paper and were working towards um you know kind of again putting it into practice and so um, all of those things um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, getting to be a part of. Um, but obviously, first and foremost, I've got to coach my team. And um, but, you know, there's 24 hours in a day. So let's let's do this thing. Jeff, do you have still a follow up? Yes, uh, Jeff Patrikas from the Journal Sentinel. Again, you mentioned when you talk to recruits about trying to say to them, look, you can get onto something that we're building and, and create a legacy. 
But that's a tough ask for kids who have seen the program struggle. I'm just curious, how do you get them to trust or what would you sell about yourself to get them to trust you, whether it's your record as an assistant at UConn, what you did at BU, your plans for UW? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question, Jeff. I think, you know, first of all, when I say legacy, um, I really define it as kind of leaving a place better than you found it. And so for me, I would say that that's that's kind of what I tried to do here at, at BU. I, I wasn't um, looking to, to leave BU. It, it is my alma mater. I love it. And at the same time, this Wisconsin opportunity, um, just the, the timing, it, you know, you, you, you can't pick the timing, right? You know, you know, man plans and God laughs. And so, um, you know, I'm really, you know, appreciative um, that I was able to leave BU in a better place than I found it. And I think that I can tell them like I'm a living example of that. That's something that you can do. And especially, and, and I'm from Massachusetts, so I stayed home and I was able to do that. Um, and so I think that in addition to the fact that you know, depending on what it is you want to accomplish. I've also coached pros and I've coached Olympians and I've seen what it takes from, you know, the start to, to kind of through their career from freshman year through senior year to help them continue to, to get better and grow. And um, so I think all those things, hopefully they'll see, you know, I have a track record and I'm not just kind of, um, you know, just kind of blowing smoke. George, do you have a follow up? Yep. Uh, Mer Marissa, first, I got a text from Bobby Mullen from your UConn days. Oh, Bobby! He said he helped you out drive. Oh, my God, I love Bobby! <laughs> I worked for him at Seton Hall when he was at SID there. He's with the Big East now, of course. He, but he is, says hi. He that. says congratulations. Thank you. I love he him. He really is. I said, hey, Bobo! <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. He's a Bobby Mullen fan club now. Um, and, and for you, you touched on, you know, how much of analytics you put into the game. You've touched on what type of coach you are. Um, do you have a staff in place there, an idea of it, of who will be on your staff here in Madison um, as much as you can? Yeah, no, um, you know, right now, obviously, um, it's just, we just posted, I think, the jobs um, this past weekend maybe um and so we're you know i'm still looking at resumes and still trying to figure it out um and and build the best stuff that i possibly can um but i i know that this is such a special place so i know there'll be a lot of people interested and in, um you know joining me and i'm a special person so i feel like that's no just kidding um no so i i think um no i i'm really excited about putting together uh, you know a strong staff because again keeping players in the state, um, building the wall, if you will, um, and just really, um, you know, making sure that there's connections there. I do have a lot of connections still from my times at Minnesota, um, but, you know, it can't hurt to have someone, you know, or, or some, some ones that um, also are, are connected in that way as well. Any other questions? All right. I don't what George, one more. All right, so you, you did touch on it uh twice prior, but if you go back to September, right here on Madison, there was Unity and Diversity March led by multiple black student athletes here at Wisconsin. Have you been in touch with the student athletes that led that march or in the forefront um in that at all? And you know, what are your plans? I mean, not to put too much on your shoulders. You haven't even started coaching yet, but to bring that and and to move forward that movement here in Madison. Um, yeah, to answer your first question, no, I, I have not, um, but I, I do intend to kind of be able to make connections within the campus community um, and the community at large. I, I think that's important. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have any intention of kind of shying away from it and kind of siloing myself in the Cole Center. Um, and at the same time, I, I want to be really cognizant of the fact that um, this is really important work, but it is also really intense work. And so is building a, a winning program and tradition. And so um, I want to be able to strike that balance and, and be able to show my players the, my commitment to them first and foremost, and then also be able to show my commitment to the community and um, the students at large.